scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I want us to remain ever grateful for the mighty hand of God in our midst, for his mercies upon our lives. Every time I sit back and I listen to the testimonies, you know, these things are not the workings of a man. They are the workings of God through men. But no man unassisted by God can produce these results. Nicodemus already taught us. He came to Jesus and he said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Hallelujah. And so we thank God, not just for these testimonies, but for what God is doing in and through this ministry across the nations of the earth. Without exaggeration, phenomenal manifestations of His Spirit, transformation, even by the Word of God. And we thank God for what He's doing. As always, let me encourage everyone especially those who are connecting from across the world you are as much a part of our family as those who are within seated in this place whether you are in ghana south africa uk america it doesn't matter even technology has given us intelligence to know that relative to reach distance is no longer a barrier Hallelujah. And I have taught you here, and it, it bears mention again that fans don't receive anything. There is no provision for fans of anything. Those who admire superstars, there's no stake for them. There is no inheritance for them. So you must move, graduate from being a fan, graduate from being a well-wisher in fact graduate from being a member to become a student of scripture one who is opened and determined to hear and learn i teach for the effect of transformation not just for the communication of an awareness of an information behind the things that i do when i teach i hope and pray and seek to see people transformed hallelujah so i want to encourage you whether you are following from any part of the world at all and then even for us who are here connect sincerely by the covenant of understanding lord this is my word this is church for me my heart is open to receive and right there in your room your office your home the koinonia experience is not only limited to this auditorium the koinonia experience is a spiritual experience that can be transported by faith to any region any home any locality are we together you can replicate the koinonia experience by your faith so right there in your room it can be koinonia for you in your office anywhere at all there are certain conditions that must happen for koinonia to happen the presence of the man of God is the last of the conditions. Number one, it is the presence of God. Number two, there must be an atmosphere of faith. Number three, the ministry of the Holy Spirit must be respected. Number four, the supremacy of the word must be honored. Number five, there must be a teaching priest 
who is able to communicate the counsel of God with exactitude and precision. Number six, there must be excellence. If that happens, that is the koinonia experience, regardless where you are. So it's important that you don't idolize the experience. It is localized just for the sake of administration and um, to be able to bless those who are domiciled within that environment. But as far as the experience is concerned, it can be transported anywhere, even now. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to know. And um, I think the second thing I would want to say before we get to the word is, um, you must have this understanding. Please listen carefully. You must have this understanding that every time you see me travel to any region in this nation or any nation of the world, it is not a man of God just going to preach. You need to understand that you are also with me on that trip by covenant. Are we together? Yes. Because when you are bound by covenant and by revelation you need to understand that it is not there would be one person who is doing the preaching and god working the miracles but i want you to know that every glory every joy is to jesus but in terms of the honor the honor is shared honor to all of us i've told you that the days of superstar christianity is over god is not just interested in celebrities he's interested in ambassadors the difference between a celebrity and an ambassador is purpose. Hallelujah. Are we together now? So as we travel across the nations of the earth, bringing the message of life, this week now I'll be in Kenya, and um, I trust that it's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal meeting, um, blessing the body of Christ. Oh, by the way, that reminds me. Let me just put a word. I just mentioned Kenya, and I think it's good. Now, we've had several calls from our Koinonia family back there, whether there can be an opportunity for a personalized meeting. Let me just use this opportunity and answer you. Um, lovingly, no. There might not be that opportunity, and I'll tell you why. Um, I have certain ethics that I work with. When I'm invited to a region or a city, I limit myself to honor those who are hosting me and accept with their permission or when I am done and I decide to stay, I don't go around organizing any extra meetings. It is my honor to those who have invited me. Influence is a very expensive commodity. You don't play with it. You can destroy with influence. The Bible says a man of honor who does not know. You can go to a church and bless the church and still wreck the church because of the mismanagement of influence. Influence is a delicate and ex an expensive commodity that if trusted with it by God, you must obtain the grace to be able to manage it so that it does not destroy. Are we together now? So um, for my lovely people, our family in Kenya, we are coming to bless the body of Christ, bringing the message of life, of hope, transformation, healing and deliverance, and they just finished their election, so... I'm sure it will give us an opportunity to also speak over the nation. But for our Koinonia family, well, if you can organize yourselves, I'm sure somewhere in the course of the stay we'll be able to just say hello and say God bless you. But um, um, I want us to be patient, and this applies to all our people across the globe. You should have known by now that we are people who are not hasty. Um, we never act except by the leading of the spirit it has been the secret of this ministry and the leading of the spirit sometimes can look deceptively slow but your results will never have to be repeated as a result of failure you will get it and get it with precision are we together so um that's that but then my, my message really is that all of us let me show you one scripture can i show you one scripture i think that should be first give us first samuel First Samuel 24 and I think verse 30 that, that scripture just came to my mind just to buttress on oh dear let me just search for it first Samuel 30 I flipped give us 30 and 24 let's have amplified then we'll have any other version NLT or CEV it says, who would listen to you in this matter? 
for as is the share of him who goes into battle so is the share of him who stays by the baggage they shall share alike are you seeing that now that means the person who goes to do the actual fighting and the one who is waiting behind protecting maybe the bags the bible says both of them have equal share this is a very powerful revelation so that the one who is preaching from nation to nation and the one who is sowing the one who is praying the one who is wishing well the one who is using his influence to make the journey easy together the bible says all of them are preaching together let's see cev or nlt anyone please give us another version now it says who will listen to you when you talk like this it says we share and share alike those who go to battle and those who guard the equipment all of them share alike so for the souls that are won anywhere when we return back don't just say wow god bless him no father we thank you for the souls that were won and you expect that as god is blessing your own portion should come too except if you are not genuinely connected and except if you are not participating if not in giving in prayer if not in prayer in well-wishing if not in well-wishing you help someone to connect to the meeting in your nation wherever have this at the back of your mind number one we do what we do not just because of the reward we do it essentially because we love jesus however the truth of the matter is that a worker is worthy of his wages are we together yes so just to give you that understanding that you connect by faith so whether you are in abuja here or any part of this nation or any part of the globe connected by covenant and understanding this vision anywhere you see god doing mighty things through us it is a joy to all of us it is not a joy to one person supported by fans that's not a kingdom understanding are we together it is jesus christ glorified through those miracles through the transformations and then he gives the honor to the saints that he has used hallelujah do you have that understanding now all right so let's go straight to the word may tonight's teaching bless our hearts in jesus name um tonight's teaching was designed by the spirit of god to help us you will never come for a koinonia service and lack a spirit inspired word compliant life applicable kingdom truth i didn't play with words spirit inspired word compliant life applicable kingdom truth that makes for your lifting for your rising it is this these adjectives that help you to understand the quality of what you are receiving the speakings of a man on its own does not change doesn't really bless it is when it is spirit inspired word compliant are we together life applicable that means at the end of every teaching by the grace of god you should find the point of application in your life hallelujah tonight i'm teaching on the prize for new dimensions it's a powerful teaching that will change your life this is a teaching for those who desire more this is a teaching for those who know that there is more this is a teaching for those who have refused to plateau in life and destiny in their walk with god this is for those who know and believe that god is able to do abundantly far above all we ask and think and if you are that person say amen, amen. hallelujah open our eyes tonight and grant us grace for in jesus name we pray can you turn it into a prayer in fact i like every time we participate in prayer lord open my eyes reveal to me the keys in jesus name we pray all right so let's get to work proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. the bible tells us that the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more even unto the perfect day 
the perfect day is the day when the Lord comes the perfect day is not the day when you shine brightest the perfect day is that day when the Lord comes to wrap up life as we know it so until then you have not gotten into that perfect day and there is still room for more there is still room to keep pressing the Bible says more and more is the heritage of everyone who is the justified are we together more and more not more alone not more once more and more one level of greatness after another one level of encounter after another job chapter 28 from verse 7 and 8 job himself was giving us a testimony by the spirit that there is a path which no fowl knoweth which the vulture's eye hath not seen. Job is speaking now. He says, The lion's whelps have not trodden, nor the fierce lion passed by it. Give us verse 7 again. Do you know what this means? The vulture, if you study the vulture, the vulture is a very strange bird. It can pick with precision anywhere there is meat that is dead and rotten. Are we together now? with precision from a high altitude you see them roaming around abattoirs you see them roaming anywhere there is a dead body anywhere there is anything that is newsworthy and can be food the vulture sustains the ability to pick the signal and yet the bible says there is a path which no fowl know it the birds have an advantage of the air they don't walk on land so they are not limited in perspective are we together the bird can see higher and greater if you drive you are only limited by the frame of your sight are we together but when you are in the air you'll be able to see a lot more now the bible says the birds have those advantages and yet there is a path their eyes cannot see it says even the vulture the vulture that has the power of sight and then the advantage to be able to smell and pick signals even the vulture has not seen are we together now verse 8 we're giving definition to more and more it says the lion's whelps have not trodden that means the lion is not afraid of any animal you know the lion does not fear it may only run to re-strategize it has earned itself the title of being the king of the jungle and so there is there is if there is any virgin place where the lion and its pride has not gotten to it will trod its feet there and establish its dominion there and yet the bible says the webs of the lion have not trodden even the angry lion has not passed by it this is only a definition that there are still realms and there are still dimensions kept for the people of god are we together that everything you have seen about god until now is not all that he wants to reveal everything you have seen about spiritual power is not all that there is all that you have seen about revelation is not all that there is all that you have seen about prosperity increase someone said there is more speak it prophetically say there is more mm. more and more is the destiny of god's people the path of the just we have been justified in christ and the bible says our destiny our heritage in christ is more and more that means there is no plateauing for the believer it is from one stride to another when you think they have exhausted everything they will come to a higher dimension may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ in revelations chapter 4 and verse 1 popular scripture john the apostle was caught up in heaven and remember the chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 he, the Bible says that he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You find that in verse 10 of chapter 1. So he was already in the spirit on the Lord's day. When you look at Revelation 1 verse 10, I believe, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So he was already in the spirit. But when we get to chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says, after this I looked. Is God helping us already? And behold, a door was opened. Where? In heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. And he said, come up here. Already in the spirit, already in heaven. And the voice said, come up here. The voice didn't just say, look around. 
rise that even though you are in the spirit even though you are already in heaven even though you have seen you have received the message to the seven churches there is still more come up here and i will show you the things that must be thereafter someone say more and more I wrote down here I said there is always more for the people of God there is always more you have to burn that as a revelation in your spirit so if God opens you up to a level of the healing anointing opens you up to a level of the prophetic opens you up to a level of wealth and prosperity opens you up to a level of leadership and influence it doesn't matter in what dimension you must settle it at the back of your mind that all I have seen is not all that there is the price for new dimensions there is always more more and more is the destiny of every believer in Christ hallelujah there is still more in your work with God there is still more as far as destiny actualization is concerned there is still more as far as your excelling in life is concerned unfortunately the Bible and even history is full of people who do well and rise to certain levels in ministry in business in career whatever area and they may not backslide they may not go down but they seem to plateau at a level and sometimes they plateau at that level until they are edged out of relevance are we together now this has, this has happened respectfully over men of God. This has happened over business people. This has happened over people in government. This has happened to leaders. The goal of this teaching is that you get to that more and more dimension where as far as the assignment committed to you is concerned and your destiny and your press into God that you will never stop. You will never have a better yesterday in the name of Jesus Christ very quickly i'm going to run through the price i like responsible christianity i am an advocate of responsible christianity responsible christianity means that number one you are open to the provisions that redemption has brought but you are also told the role the participatory role that you have to play in making that finished reality and experience in your life that is responsible christianity it is a fact that it is not all up to God and it is not all up to you are we together now yes as far as bringing that reality and making it finish from the realm of the spirit is concerned it is exclusively God's assignment but making it manifest and revealed in your life you have a role to play so the formula is always the spirit and the bride say come if the spirit is saying come and you the bride does not say come come cannot manifest the spirit and the bride say be lifted the spirit and the bride say be healed for many of you the spirit has been saying for a long time come up hither but the bride has refused to answer the spirit has been saying rise to a new level prophetically rise to a new level of prosperity rise to a new level of grace but there seem to be a spiritual deafness or the laxity to rise so tonight's teaching is equipping us with the knowledge we need to leave that area where we have been limited and to rise to a new level in the name of Jesus Christ. This may be a message for a man of God who is saying, Apostle, I may not know what is wrong with my spiritual life. I can't say I'm backslidden, but I am I'm tired. No new messages, no revelation. I'm not sure I'm seeing anything more. I'm just recycling my current realm. He said, ye have come past this mountain long enough. Turn ye not words. This may be for a businessman, someone in your finances. You can't say you are going down, but in truth, there is nothing new. New is a very powerful spiritual word. It means there is increment, there is growth. Are we together now? I'm going to give you a few keys that represent the price that all together will bring you to a new dimension and I'm praying in the name of Jesus that this teaching will not be casual for you that you will listen to it not just with your physical ear alone because the Bible says he that hath an ear there is a spiritual ear and many people do not have it 
and so they don't hear they keep nodding sometimes they say tell them and at the end of the service they don't receive anything i pray that your ears be open and your eyes be open in the name of jesus christ the first prize the first prize that is responsible for accessing higher realms and dimensions in life and in destiny is the price of a deeper experience with God. The price of a deeper experience with God. Take me deeper. You know that song? Deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close to your embrace. Take me deeper, deeper than I've ever been before. I just want to love you more and more. How I long to be deeper. Can I tell you? Those who will keep making news for the kingdom are those who understand that it is the deeper and the richer your walk with God, the more the sound of your exploits in the spirit. Are we together? Physically speaking, the heavier an object, the more it will make noise when you throw it on the ground. Is that true? When you carry a strand of hair or a feather, and you throw it, it will take so long to arrive the ground and you will almost not know that there is anything there. News is a product of deep relationship with the spirit. You want God to announce you to your world. It is not just looking for opportunities. You have to have a deeper walk with God. A deeper walk with God. Second Kings chapter 9 and verse 30, very popular and powerful scripture. Second Kings 1930 i meant to say the bible says the remnant 1930 1930 second kings 1930 the remnant that is escaped of the house of judah it says the first thing they shall do is to take root or bear root downwards and then they will bear fruit upwards are we together that those that have escaped and are preserved if they are to gain stature, they will bear root downwards. For you to understand this, you have to understand agriculture. Please look up. There are grasses and little shrubs that last for days, weeks, and at best a few months. You can pull them up because their roots are not deep. Sometimes their roots are even visible. Is that true? You can see them. And because their roots are not deep, you don't expect that they become giant trees. If you plant your maize, the ridge that you make for maize, sometimes it may not even be anything serious, just enough to cover it. Is that true? And then it grows because after three months, you are going to cut everything away. But there are trees, giant oak trees, and many trees that we have in Africa and around the world, some of those trees are 30 years old, 60 years old, hundreds of years old. And you find out that the root of those trees, without exaggeration, sometimes it can be so deep, deep enough to be the size of a house. And it sinks right to the ground. Are we together? Whether there is rain or no rain, it doesn't wait for any season. It has gone deep enough to touch where there is constant supply. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. Are we together now? Hmm. Whose leaves does not wither. And the reason is because it does not have to wait for seasons to change, to flourish. It has found its way to get a constant supply of water. Hallelujah. So the deeper your root spiritually in terms of your fellowship with god in terms of your prayer life in terms of your love for god your honor and your spiritual understanding your the, the generally your love and your passion and your fire for god there is a guarantee from that experience 
that you will not plateau show me a man whose passion for god never goes down i show you a man whose relevance will remain show me a preacher show me a businessman show me a politician show me a career person who has that degree of respect for god i show you a man that no matter what storms come he will remain and he will increase somebody say more and more one more time prophesy say more and more hallelujah are we learning in second chronicles chapter 15 second chronicles chapter 15 we'll read from verse 10 please give it to us media let's walk together second Chron second chronicles 15 from verse 10 it says so they gathered themselves together at jerusalem reading to 15 in the third month and in the 15th year of the reign of asa uh-huh and they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought, 700 oxen and 7,000 sheep, 12. And they entered into a covenant. What was the covenant? To seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul. Next verse. That whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel, he should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Two more verses, 14. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. The last verse, it says, And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. What was the secret? They said the issue of seeking God, we bind it as a covenant. We are not going to depend on our emotions. The day I feel good, the day it works well for me, no, I will seek the Lord no matter what happens. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5, speaking about Uzziah, the secret to his prosperity and exploit. The Bible says, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as Uzziah sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. The word prosper there has nothing to do with money. It means to excel. It means to advance. It means to continue. For as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper may you never get to any point in your life where you feel you have sought God enough may you never get to a point in your life where you feel your prayer life is enough may you never get to any point in your life where you feel your commitment and your passion for God is enough are we together the only place you are permitted to say enough is in acquisitions of material things and then just the earthly study of things he said of reading many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul he says this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man but as far as seeking god is concerned even in heaven our pursuit still continues is someone learning exodus chapter 33 and verse 14 we're discussing the first price the price of deep a deeper experience with god this is moses they are about to leave are we together sojourning through the wilderness and he said my presence shall go with thee and i will give you rest speaking to moses now verse 15 and he said moses is replying now if your presence does not go with us do not take us away from here our journey is useless if we do not have the backing of your presence this is a word for someone before you start taking steps verify whether god is with you if money is the only thing that is with you you are still in trouble money can be with you minus god you are only getting into trouble because even the door that will lead you to trouble must be open too so not every open door is god's door satan also opens doors the prison has doors and just because the prison door is open it can be open for you to enter inside nobody enters into the prison with a closed door the door will first have to be open among the many things you have to verify on your way 
every once in a while take a break and check what do i have around my life i have results what do i have around my life anointing what do i have around my life fame what do i have around my life more money than i had last year if god is not at the top of everything around you stop there and make sure you secure his presence before the journey continues is someone learning now failure to do that will only cause you casualties this is the mistake of great people they begin with god but then they get to a point in their christian experience where they feel listen do i really need god i've become a celebrity i am famous remember the teaching tonight is not for those who are starting the teaching tonight is the secret for remaining and increasing you know what it takes to start to start the church to start the ministry to start the business be careful when you begin to have results because among the many things that will look too heavy for you to carry may be God and so you can throw God aside so that the luggage will be easier to continue the journey I rather stay in one place with God than to move with other things and without him Moses was wise remember when they left Egypt I hope you know they did not live empty they left with gold remember they left with a lot of things Moses would have said we have gold if enemies come to capture us we'll just negotiate with them and say okay we are not empty we have gold but he said if your presence will not go with us do not take us away from here let's finish that scripture 16 it says for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in your sight is it not in that thou goest with us so shall we be separated or distinguished i and thy people from the people that are upon the face of the earth there is a mark that comes upon a destiny that values divine presence you carry divine presence in ministry the difference will be clear and unmistakable you carry divine presence in business you carry it in raising your children you carry it in exploring your destiny adventure Some of you have thrown God so that you have space to collect money. Some of you threw God as a necessary, you threw him away, you are too much of a luggage. I notice that every time I hold you, when people try to offer me money, I can't collect it. Some of you have thrown God so that you will preserve your pride. The price for new dimensions, number one, is a deeper experience with God. Take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Hallelujah. Never let the pursuit of God become an embarrassment because of where you have arrived. Can I kneel down again? Will it, be, will it not be an inconvenience? Can I lift my hands in worship again with all my subordinates here? I now run a conglomerate with offices in UK, with offices in, 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 in Russia, with offices in America, and all of my subordinates are there. Now I'm a great man of God. I have a lot of sons. Can I be embarrassed to roll on the floor before God? Never get to a point where your love for God becomes a thing of shame. You are already in trouble. Hallelujah. Never let your clothes be too expensive that it cannot touch the ground. Uh -uh. <laughs> when the ark of God was being returned back to Jerusalem, David, who was king at that time, he danced in a way that looked like he was a madman. The Bible described this as an undignified dance. And his wife, who was Saul's daughter, looked at him in shame and said, Oh dear, what a foolish and stupid king. Look at how you brought reproach to yourself before your contemporaries. And he said, Let me tell you something. You, I know you are my wife, but I need to educate you. I am not dancing before this man. I am dancing before God who collected the kingdom from your father and gave it to me. David acknowledged that that realm he was given. 
He was, who would have known? Do you know there is nowhere, David was not like Joseph who had a dream that one day he would become king. The Bible never records, at least Joseph had a consolation. He was dreaming. David never knew. If you ask David in the wilderness, David, who will you become? He will say, I will become a warrior. Not knowing that, that victory was only a starting point. Someone is already celebrating success too much. You are already over celebrating a little realm. Whereas God's call and destiny for you is that he will make you captain over his inheritance. Is someone learning? The God you found in the wilderness must be the God you honor in the palace. If the God you found in the wilderness was powerful enough to bring you in the palace, you would be foolish to throw him away for Dagon. When David came and met Saul and proposed to fight Goliath, Saul said, okay, I am a king. I have the best of armory. Take all my armory. And he said, king, I respect you but I have my weapons that I was trained with. I'm not here to come and it's not just military might. I have a covenant by reason of my seeking God. Let me tell you the truth. In this end time, God will raise unassuming, unusual people. People who when you add them up, they don't equal to the result that should be, but because of their determination to seek and walk with God, God will carry some things as gifts God will carry the prayer requests of nations and institutions and give individuals as a testament for seeking them. You believe what I'm telling you. You've not seen prosperity yet until you see people who are unassuming, who will be custodians of the wealth of the kingdom, that God will give it to them by himself. If you interview them in terms of business intelligence, the truth is that you will be disappointed. They don't add up. Yet you cannot deny the result because they sought the Lord. There are many, many kinds of graces and anointings that have not yet been released but are coming. I tell you, you will see men rise who are like gods upon the earth power and dimensions miracles and the manifestations of the spirit the deaf ears and the blindness you are talking about it will be common occurrence you will not have to put a crusade for that to happen that people will be walking on the street and they will pass a mortuary and dead bodies will come back to life without the people even knowing that they were used by god to heal the sick this is what God wants to do but there is a price the price of a deeper walk with God father you have blessed me now I have a mansion now I have cars now I have influence but I count them but dung the way I rolled 10 years ago I will see roll in your presence my clothes may have changed but my allegiance will never change my clothes may have changed but my worship will not change my car may have changed my pedigree may have changed but you still remain my God someone pray one minute Lord, I repent for trying to replace you with many things on my way to greatness. Please pray. For someone, this is why you came to church. You are my God. As a shepherd and as a king, you are my God. As an employee and as an entrepreneur, you are my God. You are my God. No matter where I go to, no matter where I become. You see, let me tell you something. Please listen. Listen and learn. 
we still have a lot to look at do you know when God begins to lift you and put you in a position of influence now you are in an elevated position where people watch you and the first thing they want to watch is who you honor and what you love you can influence a generation with one encounter to reject Christ because you have mismanaged influence there are many people today who vowed all kinds of vows to God Lord if you lift me I will stand for you but now when you begin to fly around the world you come into a realm of priority living where your name has become a key to many lives chances are excellent that God now becomes a luggage and an inconvenience for you many have lost their touch with God many have maintained a level at, at a level that God lifts you and you are still doing two verses per day honestly you are not a serious Christian maybe for a start as a believer hmm. the fast of 10 years ago must be restored back the prayer of 10 years ago must be restored back the sitting outside of 10 years ago where you say Lord it is in the dead of the night but I'm still awake with you here to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you oh, oh, oh. oh. hallelujah you have heard me say this everything God gives you is not all he wants to give you at any point in your life whatever you receive from God just know that it is part of the full package no matter how great it is God gave me one billion ah that is all and God is saying so I the goal is for hundred billion and billions of dollars to fund the kingdom and just because you had one billion in your mind it has carried you away God gave me a, this God now made me an estate uh, whatever it is ah. I cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty, and I am undone before you're the King of Kings and Lord. Of Lord, you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of hosts. Your glorious Majesty, the Abode in And I tell you, you must get to a point in your life where it is not just your knowledge that mentors people, even your worship, your allegiance to the King of Kings will make someone to say, listen, ordinary I would have laughed at this person, but I saw him 10 years ago, the same rolling, I laughed at the rolling, but look where the rolling has brought him today. And I will join and also roll. If that rolling has brought him to this level, don't waste your influence. Use it to mentor nations. Don't waste your influence. The first prize for new dimensions 
a deeper walk with God. Please sit down. Price number two. Let's hurry up so we can pray tonight. Is someone already blessed? The second price that must be paid, a non-negotiable price. Listen very carefully now. Just help those under the anointing, but please don't be distracted. If you must ascend higher levels, not only in the spirit, but in life and in destiny, superior levels of exploits, ever increasing testimonies, the price of unbending focus, that is the second price. The price of unbending focus. Mm. Show me a man of unbending focus. A man who will not be distracted, whether by success or failure. I show you a man who will remain and increase. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 even to 15. Philippians chapter 3. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He's speaking to brethren. We're talking about Apostle Paul here. Paul the Great. Paul the Anointed. Paul the Miracle Worker. Paul the Learned. Paul the Intelligent. Brethren, I count not myself. That means you can count me to have apprehended. But this is my honest review about my life. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. He never said forgetting wrong things that are behind. He never said forgetting thing, good things that are behind. He said forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to the things which are before. Ah, there are always things before. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus he says let us therefore as many as be mature that's the meaning of the word perfect be thus minded how minded that means at any point in your life count yourself to not have apprehended are we together now that even though you are honestly receiving an applause justifiably so for the strides the kingdom strides you are making that you get to a point where you do not allow your focus to bend. I count myself to not have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7. I found this scripture and it was quite interesting. The Bible says, For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. There is a relationship between focus. Are we together now? Focus and advancement. There is a relationship between distraction and shame. The price of unbending focus. I wrote a few things here that I want you to see. Number one, under the price for unbending focus, you must obtain grace to fight arrival mentality. Arrival in quote. You must obtain grace from God to fight arrival mentality. I've arrived at this level of anointing. I've arrived at this level of grace. I've arrived at this level of revelation. I've arrived at this level of prosperity. I have 10 estates. I'm a billionaire. I'm a politician. Finally, I've gotten to be a house member or senator or president or governor or whatever it is. I am now a CEO. I am now the African representative of this bank or this conglomerate. Arrival mentality has destroyed many people. Same Philippians, please. Give us 3 and verse 12. Let's read 12 and 13. Same Philippians, chapter 3, from verse 12. Philippians 3, 12. Okay, let me just pull it up here so that we don't waste time. Philippians Hallelujah. All right. He said, not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Verse 13. 
it says brethren now where we read I count myself so he's saying it is not as far as I'm concerned no matter what you tell me I still walk like somebody who has something in front I don't walk like someone who has arrived you know what arrival mentality is that means you get to a point where you tell yourself I'm not talking of contentment arrival mentality is very different from contentment hallelujah where you feel there is nothing more to do with your life as far as maximizing life is concerned you know that happened to Lucifer I will ascend above the stars of God and I will be like the most high after all my office is the custodian of the mysteries of heaven so I think I know everything little did he know that there was more beware of arrival mentality I wrote something down here both failure and success both discouragement and over celebration of results can be distractions that means success and failure can do the same thing to you eventually failure can discourage you success can create complacency while it is good and honest to celebrate every stride you must be careful and manage your celebration so that you do not over celebrate results now the truth is that when you rise among people who are lower than you no matter how little little your result is it will look big in the eyes of those lower than you you must be honest with yourself and gauge yourself by a global kingdom standard and then ask yourself have i really gone there in africa we celebrate very small things small results small results in business in ministry you will see a little corporation that maybe is netting just a few million naira even not even dollars and yet the pride that the leaders and the executives have respectfully speaking now just because you can afford food to eat just because you have a house you have a car just because you can afford a bit of luxury living and a few things it does that is not all there is to life there is so much more are we together the price of unbending focus i talk to myself every time on this wise joshua selman thank god for what god is doing in your life my phone is full of text messages from people literally across the globe without exaggeration oh man of god i listen to this this one happened and in all fairness they are not lying however you must tell yourself everything god has given me now is not all he plans to give me every level is the test for the next level every level as soon as you achieve something in a level know that it is automatically the exam you are writing for the next level every level of achievement is the test you must pass for the next level are we together So both failure and success if you have done well and the world is celebrating you don't run away don't push it away and say no 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 don't celebrate me no 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 but you must know when to draw the line the moment celebration becomes flattery and it's already planting the seed of complacency you must stop and say thank you I have received enough to motivate me for the next level my exams have started you must know when the feast of celebration is over and when you've entered the classroom to write the exams if you are still dancing in the classroom believing that the classroom is a place for celebration you will fail your exams thank God for this new level of the prophetic thank God for this new level of grace this new level of insight but now that you have given me oh God thank you for it but I know it is an exam I'm writing moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful hallelujah there are many many little small prayer groups that will never grow into a giant kingdom platform for blessing the nations because right from infancy many of them are almost killing themselves on an on arrival let me tell you this I, i'm speaking particularly to those in probably ministry business and all of that let us be very careful let us be very careful let's learn from our fathers there is nothing that somebody can want that has not been given 
and yet these fathers you see them with humility including businessmen look let me tell you for those of you who have had the opportunity to sit with billionaires and very wealthy people you will be flattered by their humility and their sense of honor and respect and you'll be asking is it really is it these people are? and then the ones that don't have anything you will know immediately that they don't have anything are we together a wealthy man can enter a restaurant and is very cautious greeting people good afternoon how are you and somebody will tell you that's the owner of this restaurant too and you hear somebody who will sit down five minutes is impatient you've kept me waiting here you don't know who i am you better you see you easily know when people begin to when they lose focus and they lose vision listen i don't know if i've taught it here but if you study the life of gideon there were two tests that they had to pass to qualify the 300 who defeated the Midianites. When Gideon blew the trumpet, the Bible says 33,000 people came. But there were too many, God said. He said, no, I can't take these people to the place of destiny like this. Test number one, whoever is afraid, whoever loves and misses his home more than the future, go back. And the Bible says about 20 or 22,000 people went back. That means everybody was there hey, we'll make it but some were already dead on arrival they went back and he said there are still too many test number two he told them you will get to the water brooks the water brooks was not at the beginning of the journey you would have to make some progress and he says study their behavior in the presence of that water those who bend and lap like dogs those are the ones that i want you to keep those who sit down and properly drink like human beings let them go back home do you know what that meant if you watch a dog and as it takes water it never takes water sitting or lying down it means and I'm, I'm aware that i still have somewhere to go this is a momentary success by the time you get to the water brooks after walking for a long time that is a sign of results now you have gotten water to quench your thirst and he said those who sit down that means they have camped i'm not standing up again let them go home their attitude those who lap like dogs that means they still have the sense of vision that this is just a momentary blessing but the real journey is not to i didn't leave my home to come and drink water i le left my home to go and defeat the midianites and if i find water on the way thank god but i will not come there and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you prophesy to yourself and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you price number two the price of unbending focus on bending focus can you still remember the vision of your ministry or you are forgotten can you still remember the vision of your organization can you still remember what you wrote on paper some of you have even misplaced the notebooks where you wrote the visions that govern your life because as at the time you wrote it you didn't have a business as at the time you wrote it you didn't know you would be this great you wrote many things there now you cannot even find the book buy another one and start again if the words are really precious you honor them by writing it says write for these words are faithful right they are true hallelujah if you don't have a vision for your life and the things that you are doing life will give you many visions useless visions that are inconsistent with the blueprint of your call for someone god is speaking to you get back go back home and open that notebook the way this ministry is going is that what god told us we started well but on the way they said if you are going like this you will be hungry and he said so which one works now they said let me tell you the one that works now do this do that and you are veered off from what god told you and your covenant with god are we together on bending focus 
we need to become people of focus so that you are not distracted thank god for the great things but you must be at your vision thank god for food thank god for the blessings that follow destiny but never be distracted by them i listened to a video i watched a video years ago i think it was by late steve jobs it was a video that they did in 1992 or thereabout and it was then you know um they were really very small and he was doing a little training for some of the senior executives of his corporation then and i listened very carefully to what he told them he told them that our goal is you know i can't remember exactly what he said the goal was but there was no mention of money there there was no mention of fame there there was no mention of reaching the whole world just like a human effort of becoming famous they were never part of the goals the goal was to be able based on what they said to at least be able to contribute to make the world a better place by offering whatever it is that they were offering i said no wonder they became great for someone from beginning you say this life my share it must come that's your goal and you find out you won't go far that way because already you are already at the corridors of compromise because the goal is not the goal is not pure and not um the goal is not superior enough to guide your life and word of distractions hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you